Budokai Tenkaichi 4 is coming. <laughs> Greetings everyone, I'm RTR and yes, you did hear me correctly. In case you've been living under a rock for the past week and a half, you probably know that Budokai Tenkaichi 4, a game 16 years in the making of a sequel, is finally releasing. And I didn't think I'd get to say that to be honest. It, it's kind of baffling to even think that, that would be another sequel to a game. Everyone was expecting Xenoverse 3. We had some leaks that happened a while ago um, that said Xenoverse 3 was in production this year. It, before we know, it still could be. I don't Bruh. think it is anymore. It's not going to be for a very long time. So, yeah, it failed at the Battle Hour on March 5th. Uh, we actually have a trailer. Over there. You know, I think I just, I just watched the trailer again. Just I have the trailer. I have the trailer now. Let's just watch it. Shout out to um, Gamers Prey. Uh, Upload to YouTube. I could find a good one on YouTube for some reasons. Did the, the only one, but yeah, let's just let's give it a watch. Like when I first saw this, I thinking, oh, my mind immediately went, oh, remake. This is amazing. And it keeps going. This is all Budokai Three. I think it's all in all this is Budokai Three. I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have Kid Buu and we have the Super Saiyan 4s. So we'll go into more of this when we get to the roster later. But. Just. It was on this moment right here. I knew. My brain immediately knew. And. It looks so good, man. It just. It, God. It looks so amazing. I hope it's not too loud in my eye. I feel all good. Like. Oh. Look at this. That, that that image right there. Like, that is amazing. The fact that we're getting, like, it's Namek. I know a, a couple of people said, like, Blue Goku or Namek this morrow. We're getting... No, it's not. We'll talk about that in a bit. But, yeah. I was speechless when this happened. And a new Budokai Tenkai begins. Which, they yeah, just confirmed this is a new, like... I think they'll call it Budokai... Tenkaichi. I don't think they'll call it Ten Tenkaichi, Tenkaichi Four, perhaps, or I think they might call it Dragon Ball Super Budokai Tenkaichi, or they'll give it a new tagline altogether. Maybe I'm not entirely sure, but it's amazing. The fact we got that is completely incredible. So I think today I'm going to use this time to go through all the stuff I think might appear in the game, some potential release dates, more info. So yeah, we'll go through that. Now, now the roster is something everyone is currently talking about. Uh, as we all know, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is known for having one of the largest fighting game rosters in general. I think Xenoverse 2 has more now, I'm pretty sure, I want to say. Uh, I'll put the numbers on screen somewhere. But it was a quite large title, but it had a lot of like weird characters, like Gui, Freezer Soldier, a lot of things I don't think will make into the final game. Um, I expect the roster to be about in between what Budokai Tenkaichi 1's base roster without transformations is, which I think is about 67, and the current position we are now in Xenoverse 2 is like 150 something characters. I can expect it to be around 90 to 100 characters potentially because of the fact that um, DLC exists now we'll touch on DLC towards the end of the video but yeah I kind of do expect uh, a lot of characters a lot of hype characters potentially to be um, done as DLC it is quite unfortunate but that's just kind of the way that um, things go nowadays with video games being made in production that's how the general um, form of how games are made nowadays you, you've seen Xenoverse 2 <laughs> We've all seen how Xenoverse 2 is still having stuff pumped out into it. We just recently got the announcement of Orange Piccolo, and that game kind of rides on if we get another playable Beast Guard or not. I think so, we will. Uh, we'll, we will just have to see that. Now, what I think will be in the roster, oh, some potential things I want that are not going to be obvious. I said, I don't think we're going to get anything manga related, like Moro, Granola and stuff, all that stuff, because I'm pretty sure they're just not allowed to do anything related to uh, the manga stuff at the moment. 
Like, if it's manga, they, with a few, I think there's like one exception I can think of that they've done the manga that they haven't done in the anime, which is um, Vegeta's Burst Gamma Flash. I know when like, Dokkan, I think Legends might also have done that, but yeah, uh, they're not allowed, to, I don't think they're allowed to touch anything uh, related to uh, the uh, Moro, Granola, Superheroes, eventual uh, manga adaptation until it's animated, of course, and it's, we're going to get another Dragon Ball anime. It's just going to happen. The franchise makes way too much money to not capitalize on another anime. So we just have to wait that out. And I think within the next couple of years, we could be seeing the anime returning, which means we will eventually see. I see them doing uh, what they uh, current what they did with Super and Xenoverse 2, which is just releasing story segments of the newly adapted um, Moro arc and Granola Arc and potentially Superhero um, as the anime goes out as well and if we can just have them side by side like how uh, when Super was releasing because Super was in its Goku Black Arc I think when Xenoverse 2 released I want to say in 2016 that was over six years ago good god let time fly but yeah I remember them doing um, the, UV, the UV 6-7 tournament the U 6v7 tournament and then Goku Black Arc, all those like paid DLC stories as um, time went along. Speaking of story segments, I do think the one of the best and favorite features about uh, the book I think IG series was especially three had a very good um, story mode. It was very nice. They had uh, it did it separated everything into sagas like the original um, sagas did in the anime, and then had its own spin-off sagas that weren't directly related to Z. So we had the um, Dragon Ball Saga, which went um, chronicled some key events in the original Dragon Ball series. We had the Special Saga, which I think did the movies, if I remember correctly. And then we had What If Saga, which I'm particularly interested in, and I want to see them do this again. Dragon Ball now it doesn't have a lot of What If content. The only the biggest What If content that currently exists is only in like Asian regions with the um, Dragon Ball Heroes or Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Uh, we we only got war the one game. And then it never got updated. The last time we got a what dedicated what if section, I think it was in Raging Blast 2, I believe. Um, we had an entire what if section or had what if categories, I do remember. They had a Gogeta vs. Vegeta, that was the most prominent one in there. Another mode that everyone seems to be talking about nowadays is tournament mode. I was a big fan of this as a kid. Potentially now with online capabilities, I can see this being a lot better in terms of like, like how Smash Bros. Ultimate has a tournament mode online. You can kind of arrange tournaments and do it that way, but I kind of don't really care about the tournament mode that much. But if it's heavy online play in Budokai Tenkaichi 4, even though I think this game is going to go for a more casual approach, because we have the casual uh, games in terms of the universe, and then we have the more competitive side on fighters, I feel like this is going to fall more to that the universe 2 area of like there is a competitive side to it, people will make a competitive side to it. But I don't think it will be a, like esportsy competitive side. I know a lot of people have been saying like, "Oh, this is the next competitive Dragon Ball game." I personally don't think so. That's not how the book I think IC series was ever really presented as. I know they were quite old games, but they weren't presented as like something you would ever go in competitive. It was actually quite broken, which I'm kind of curious to see how they balance a lot of stuff because back then you wouldn't patch a game if someone if Super Sentai Go Home was broken. You couldn't do anything about that, apart from just release a sequel that fixed it. But we live in a day and age now where patches come out, characters are changed. I know in Xenoverse 2 they sometimes change um, skills that are broken. So are we going to get that in Budokai Tenkaichi 4? And pre presumably so, if people find out ways to do something, people can then just patch in fixes. But I feel this game is meant to be more casual friendly and not more on the competitive side. Um, of Dragon Ball games. Now, when it comes to gameplay elements, I feel like a lot. I've, I've seen a lot of people discuss how this is going to play like, and I'm just going to play relatively the same um, to Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Is my hope anyway? If it just plays like Budokai Tenkaichi 3, just with this very new, fresh coat of paint on it, I'd be a happy camper. But um, I know the big thing. I don't know, I'm trying to see if I can find a controller here. Yeah. The big thing everyone always talks about is the beam struggles or the um, clashes. Because when you get into a clash in 
Budokai Tenkaichi 1, 2, and 3, you would have to place your hand over this. How most people do it, by the way, because you could do it the normal way, which is by spinning the alloy like that, but how most kids did it is you would put your hand, your palm over the controller and then spin like crazy and destroy your controller and your palm in the process. Kind of reminds you of um, Mario Party back in the day, the Owl My Hands or Mario Party 1. I find it quite strange that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about a solution to this. A lot of people have either said they either don't want it in the game or would like the Owl My Palms to come back. It's weird that no one, and I see why because it's tied to one of the worst Dragon Ball games out there. A lot of people haven't brought up the fact that Ultimate Tenkaichi, the spiritual, the, the second spiritual successor, because I'm pretty sure Raging Blast is the original successor to uh, the Budokai Tenkaichi series, was had beam rules that didn't have like spinning the analog stick. It had butter mashing, which I feel like is arguably a hell of a lot better than destroying your hands. It still does damage your controller by pressing a button over and over again, but it's a lot better than how um, other games like the Budokai, the original Budokai Tenkaichi uh, and Raging Blast handled it. I, I think it was the first, if I'm not mistaken. In the comments below, if I'm wrong, let me know. I'm a bit of a moron sometimes when it comes to this stuff. Now on to the weird stuff that I think not a lot of people have talked about when it comes to, this is more things I'm interested in to just look at, is um, collector edition for the game, pre-order bonuses and DLCs. Now, for collector's editions, they usually do a nice statue of a, a, a character in the game, or they give you um, some random memorabilia towards the game. I know Xenoverse 1, 2, Fighters, and Kakarot have all had figures, very nice figures, oh, and uh, Breakers as well, um, also had a, um, it was a lava cell. I do own them all, because I sell out, and I really do hope my biggest thing that I really want if they do, because they tend to do them in the style of the game that is being played so, um, for Xenoverse 1 and 2 they had more like generic anime style figures, like you could get in like a generic storm by like, Band Presto or Master, I think it's Master, Master Stars I want to say, who does them um, but yeah, and, like, they have this style um, for Fighters they did one that looks more like it was straight out of the manga, they have a Super Saiyan Goku that was looks like it's out of the manga panel, it looks amazing and the Kakarot style went for more light hearted -y, um, like diorama of Goku and Gohan on the Nimbus with the dragon in the background. Uh, it's really, really good. I really want for the Budokai Tenkaichi 4, if they do have a collector's edition with a figure, Blue Goku. A Blue Goku, if, he, if he's doing the pose, the, the ROF pose where he's standing there, or like the one in the trailer, it would... You would have my money day one, I'll say that right now. I will blatantly admit that right now, you have my money frame one of the pre-order. Like, you have it anyway, but I would just ideally want that as well. Now, when it comes to pre-order bonuses, it's a bit of a weird situation because they kind of do it in two different ways in the past. I think they'll do it towards the latter of um, Zimbus 1 and 2 had characters for pre-order bonuses where you would just get a character that wasn't in the game. They would add it months later for just like a small like pre-order bonus price. Uh, for Xenos 1, it was Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, and for, I, think, I don't know why they did that, it was kind of weird, I know Super Saiyan 4 Goku's just in the game. It's kind of weird, they just kind of locked him behind for a second. Uh, for Xenos 2, because of when it was coming out, Goku Black had just been first introduced. Um, I don't think there were episodes at the time, uh, maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but they did Goku, base Goku Black as a character um, for Xenoverse 2, it was unlockable, then they released him later on. I think, I think just before they released Rose, I think, they um, allowed you just to buy him for um, a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds. Um, but for fighters, I think maybe another game later on, if you pre-order, you got early access to a character. So a character that would be available um, in the game later on, you just got access to them immediately, which was... Um, I don't think, I think it was Blue Goku, Blue Vegeta, and maybe Android 21, I want to say. I know definitely Blue Goku and Vegeta, and I can't, maybe Android 21, I'm not entirely sure. So what I expect them to do, and they will do this, this is Bandai I was talking about, they will do this as a pre-order bonus. I, depending on how they do transformations and how they word characters, I either think it's going to be Beast Gohan or Cell Max, if 
no anime gets announced this year. If the anime gets announced, I think that's a completely different board game. That is, if the anime announces and starts to release next year, then I do think it could be like maybe Moro or whatever, depending on what the release date is. We'll get to release date in a short bit. But yeah, I do think they will put early access, early access keyword there, to either Beast Gohan or Cell Max, purely because they sell. That it just gets more pre-orders. That's how that works. Um, I know with the Goku Black thing, it was a big thing at the time. It made a lot of people want to pre-order. Um, the fact that you locked Blue Goku and Blue Vegeta and the new, I'm pretty sure the new character Android 21 behind early access wall or just playing the story mode, which no one liked, in Fighters was a big incentive for people to pre-order. Not as much as um, the new exclusive character, but I don't think you could lock a character behind Pathor. They could, and they might, but I, I don't think, even if they do that, I don't think it would be someone as big as Beast Gohan. If they do do a completely separate character that they then add on later on, I do think that they won't do a major Beast Gohan level character. They might do, like, I can't even begin to think. Yeah, I can't think. Maybe let, let, let me go. Let me know in the comments below who you think. If they had to do a paid character, like a hype character, who would think it would be? They could do Gohan Superhero, Beast Gone, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't see them doing that because I want to see people play the game and unlock the character, so maybe, maybe not. Topic of paying for characters DLC, yes, as I mentioned. Bandai is Bandai. They will release DLC. This game is going to get a shitload of DLC. Likes the universe who it is, it's just going to happen. It's an unfortunate thing, we just can't really stop or oh, we have to accept that it's a thing. Uh, as the Alex said, if the anime comes back, I feel like that's where most of our DLC is going into new story packs, into new character packs for those arcs. I would probably like the DLC to come back because I would like to play. Uh, could you imagine playing like Ultra Ego Vegeta or like true UI Goku? Or the the giant Susano form, because we can have giant. This will be our first playable Cell Max, probably by the way, because in a lot of the video games like Legends and Dokkan at the moment, like the two big ones that potentially could have another character, um, Dokkan's the only one I can see happening within before Budokai Tenkaichi 4 comes out, possibly for anniversary. We all know, but I feel like actual probable controllable Cell Max. I don't think will get until Budokai Tenkaichi 4 because no other game can put him in without being too large. DLC hopes, I, I, I hope that it would be small DLC because like I said I want all of them to be in the basic, I want everyone to have access to the characters. Uh, my main thing is the fact that if the anime comes back I do think it will be very much tied to um, a lot of stuff. The GT story maybe, I think maybe GT characters could be sold as DLC. They haven't really done that since Xenoverse 1 I believe I want to say. I remember there being some story missions tied to the Super Saiyan 4 at some point in Xenos 1. And I, I don't think they did it for Xenos 2 at all. Yeah, I'm trying to think now. Yeah, I don't think they did anything for Xenos 2 DLC related to the um, GT. They, they mainly prioritized Super for that because it was the currently releasing thing. Actually, speaking speaking of fighters, I do think Android 21 has a good chance of being in the game as DLC, actually, now I think about it. Um, she's like a main one, I pretty hope. Maybe. They kind of haven't done anything else, but I'm hoping because they have an opportunity to do this now. Charlotte could be in the game as well. Potentially, all those like game exclusive characters they could put in. Heroes content, I don't I know a lot of people have said they want to see Heroes content. As much as I, with all my heart and soul, really want to have Heroes content in the game, I know it won't be. Um, if my, the only hero stuff I think we're going to get in the future is Xenoverse 3. That's kind of the only, that's the closest thing we have that's tied to Heroes at the moment. So I'm hoping if we get any Heroes content, it's from Xenoverse, uh, Xenoverse, the eventual Xenoverse 3, when that releases potentially in like another five or six years. I do think that these games both, um, well, maybe Fighters, but I know Xenoverse 2 and Budokai 4 are probably going to keep getting DLC as time goes along. I'm hoping that Budokai Tenkaichi 4 kind of silently puts Xenoverse to sleep. Being the, like another arena fighter. I don't think this game to two games need updating at the same time. I'm hoping it'll probably keep coming out for a bit. Maybe if the anime returns. I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't stop releasing content for both games, but yeah, I would like Budokai Tenkaichi 4 to Budokai Tenkaichi 4 to finally put that game to just to rest. Just let it peacefully die. 
we've all had enough of the game by now. I still love Doomers 2. It's not in my top 20 games of all time. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is in my top 10. But I, I need it to just slowly die so we can get to Universe 3 um, now. My thirst for a Dragon Ball game has died down considerably with the announcement of this game. I'm happy, I'm content, I know one's coming. So, um, speaking of when it might be releasing, uh, if we look over to the game releases, uh, we can kind of notice a pattern. There's some outliers in here, but we can kind of notice a pattern. If we go back to, um, to a recent-ish game, let's go to Battle of Z. Um, that released in January 2014. Uh, Xenoverse 1, February, so it's quarter, like, so you've got a quarter one pattern of um, the years. Xenoverse 2 being a bit of an outlier here, uh, releasing November 2nd or October uh, in other places. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, yet again, January 26. Uh, World Mission being kind of an outlier here. We have kind of have like a, a weird mix of like sometimes it's an outlier, sometimes it's not. I'll kind of give my theories of why. It's kind of a lesser game, to be honest. Uh, it's not a main line, like console-ish release. Um, you know, this did release on Switch. Um, the only real outlier here is Universe 2. I don't know why it released so late. I can't remember. I think it's because it, it might have been announced earlier. Um, I'll put the announcement on screen, probably. Then we go to Kakarot, releasing January 16th. Um, the Breakers being a bit of a smaller game. Like I see it released in October of last year, of course. And then, of course, we have no confirmed release date now. Now, I think, and this is perfect speculation, I have no idea, I think, based on this information, and because of when it was announced, I think this game is going to release in quarter one of 2024. Now, the, the, the two major release dates that could have been there, I think, was about January or November of this year. Well, January of next year, November of this year. I don't think it's going to, because of it's announced quite later on to the start of 2023, I don't think we're getting anything this year, really. I think we're just going to get more Universe 2 updates this year and potentially more info about Universe Budokai Tenkaichi 4. I definitely think we're getting some E3. There's no way we're not. Well, E3, I think uh, the I think the Xbox or PlayStation State of Play this year might show more about it, considering that neither of them are going to E3 this year. Uh, I might cover E3 this year. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. I'm the question in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I do think, it, in my personal opinion, I think it's releasing in 2024. I'm going to throw a hypothetical date, let's say um, February 3rd. That's my prediction. Yeah, that's when I think the game's going to release. Or February 3rd, it might be, or whatever the Friday of that year is. Uh, whatever the Friday of that week that the 3rd's in. Because most, I think they always release on Fridays. So yeah guys, that was my Budokai Tenkaichi 4, a uh, little go down breakdown, I guess, more of what I want to be in the game, more what's happening about it, what are my hopes are, uh, let me know what you guys think of the questions I've asked throughout the video in the comments below, if you want to see more Budokai Tenkaichi 4 news, I'm going to be covering it as, hopefully as soon as it comes out, a bit late to this one, because I wasn't originally going to do a video on this one, I saw a shitload of people did it, I thought, ah, oh, I kind of want to throw my hat into the mix as well, um, the music stuff, it's coming. I keep saying it's coming. It's this game. This is my job, man. This is my job. This is my hobby. So, and I have other. I have. I'm in a different place, if you can tell. Like I'm living in a new place because I, I have university to go to now. I have studies to do. So, I have more priorities than doing YouTube. So YouTube is a um, a nice break for me, essentially, in the middle of what I'm doing. So, yeah. If you guys enjoy. I'm going to try my best to stay up to date with Brooklyn and take KG4 news to bring to you guys. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you later.